Good evening, dear viewers, and a warm welcome to today's episode of Visit to Medical Advice from a Holistic Point of View. And at this point again, many thanks for your inquiries and also your case reports. Which always let me choose these things to discuss with you here today. And I have an email here from Elke. And Elke writes, I am 61 years old and a pensioner and I'm overweight. I struggle with being overweight. Now, struggling with being overweight is definitely something that you may not be able to recognise the causes of why one is overweight. On April the 9th, I went to the family doctor and we discussed my blood count. And the only value that was actually elevated was HbA1. But I had the impression that the blood count test which are carried out so compulsorily, are actually based on very few real metabolic parameters. Because it would now, of course, also be of great importance when being overweight to see a differential blood count. It would be important to see hormone levels now too. It would also be important to watch the enzymatic levels to assess hormone breakdown and it would be important to know things from the blood which might also answer questions. The doctor said I had thick blood and that this would cause disadvantages and I don't want to take any blood thinners or aspirin. I wouldn't want that either. But you have to know that on the one hand you are of course 61 years old and with a certain obesity, you have a different metabolic situation than at 40. You also have to know that you probably haven't had a menstruation for five or maybe more years. That said, detoxification is different during menopause. Therefore, at this point, it is really very important to also think about, and with menopause, or if I'm in menopause, then how strong must a body take over the regulatory power itself? Because this is sometimes an underestimated detoxification, which we women experience in a gifted way over many years through menstruation. When doctors speak of thick blood, they usually speak of the hematocrit level. So this is the corpuscular volume of the erythrocytes. And from it, they can see whether the erythrocyte stagnation is there. And so the question is whether to give a blood thinner now. But with that, you wouldn't achieve blood thinning effect. The question is, if you give a blood thinner, then it's more or less about preventing the occurrence of inflammation in the blood and that the cell membranes are also at risk at this point. And this defect in the cell membranes is now triggered via the blood platelets. The moment the platelets clump together, that is a purely a bit materialistic worldview. One prevents the platelets from causing this defect, which of course in turn is a completely normal occurrence in our body to close this defect in the cell membrane. If you have a therapist near you who does dark field microscopy, then you should ask them to look into your living blood. Is it actually about the platelets? Or is it maybe also about the red blood cells? The red blood cells must have a high membrane tension from minus 70 to 80 millivolts. And when these membrane tensions are too weak, the red blood cells clump together. 
that would be a stagnation in the blood. Which, of course, may also have to do with a disturbance of the microcirculation, the small capillaries. You wouldn't even recognise that in the blood count. However, if you see increased platelets in the blood count and then give a blood thinner, then one actually does not do justice to the concern of the body because an increased number of platelets would mean that the body is not breaking down platelets regularly as it produces them and the spleen is responsible for that. I give Pinikel from the Sanum Company to people who have increased thrombocytosis. Maybe 10 drops three times a day. And then you look and you support the liver. The liver is a central organ here as an overall large metabolic disc. And with the support of the liver and spleen, the liver can be helped with Taraxacum, the dandelion, or with the artichoke, Cynara drops, but also with the Cardius marianus, the milk thistle, or absinthe, the woodworm. It is all about bitter substances. And I am a great admirer of Mother Liver. And if you want to do something good for the liver once a year and clear all the regulatory power of a hundred thousand small bile ducts, a new flow also starts. Because the liver has a lot to do with how your hormones are doing. The liver also has a lot to do with how your blood flow is going. And that is why it is so important that you integrate the liver, the spleen and also the bowel into a good blood circulation. And one of the most important things that the lactic acid is in the intestine actually produced for us is lactic acid. So if you want to think about good blood circulation and about flowing blood, Always think about right spinning lactic acid. Where is it found? Apple, cider vinegar, sauerkraut juice. Effective microorganisms. And then that is a completely different regulatory power in your body. And it flows again. Being overweight can mean several things. Do you have a hormonal status and see that in your hormonal balance something is out of balance then in your case it is understandable if you had an oestrogen dominance that you actually become overweight especially in the problem areas sometimes you can just get just bread and water eat bread and drink water and you still gain weight that said, this oestrogen dominance stimulates that too. But you can also develop an oestrogen dominance. Not that the body is producing too much oestrogen, but because you may handle too much in plastic. Plastics are phthalates. Plastic is the plasticizer. Plastic is the inner workings of the coffee machine or plastic bottles everywhere you have drinks or flu food in plastic. And when it comes into contact with liquids, these phthalates dissolve. These phthalates have a stimulating effect on our oestrogen receptors, so be careful. Protection against breast cancer is gone with all that oestrogen-containing phthalates. Also for the prevention of a prostate tumour. There are certain colon cancers and, of course, breast cancer. An increased stimulation means you measure it then, an oestrogen-positive tumour that is often triggered by this additional oestrogen stimulation. Or maybe you just have too much oestrogen because you have too little progesterone. Then that would mean, of course 
that the progesterone synthesis has to be pushed. The best way to do this is through exercise. And second best is via utrogestin or via nature identical hormones via the skin. I really enjoy working on the skin because you wouldn't believe it that everything you put on the skin is also in our body. The good stuff, but also the not so good stuff. Therefore, you should be very careful at this point and have a close look. And maybe if you are a pensioner now, take a look at everything. What you actually use in your everyday life. And maybe come up with one or the other thing that you should rather not use in your household. Not to mention that the whole cosmetics industry and hair colours and all this are associated with a high burden on our body. You sent to me a lab result and that's the HbA1c. HbA1c is the long-term sugar. If you come to my practice sober in the morning and will test the sugar and you haven't eaten anything in the morning, then you will see that the sugar is usually quite low. And then you are, you and the doctor are happy. But if I test the long-term sugar in the morning on an empty stomach and the long-term sugar is high and it's already high at 7.8, then I have to tell you that compliance is different. That shows a picture of the body over the last four weeks. Because the red blood cells only have a half-life of a lifetime of 30 to 40 days. So, if by the overpressure in sugar, which is caused by a met metabolic process, they are too stressed, then you can see that from this value. That means you are getting into a pre-diabetic situation. And now it is important that you know whether you are already developing insulin resistance. Because insulin resistance does not mean anything other than that the sugar cannot enter the cell. Insulin can't dock. What does that mean? This means, like in evolution, the body converts sugar. The first one to do this and convert it into the connective tissue cells is the liver. This is not good in the long term because the proportion of high quality liver cells, which perform about 500 tasks for our human organism, therefore becomes smaller and the other sugar is turned into fat. Because really high quality meals weren't available every day in evolution. And the body thus creates its so-called fat reserves, depots, which it can access again at times of need. So a pre-diabetic situation can be led back again. Nobody has to have diabetes. You can run away from it by moving. You can reduce that by reducing carbohydrate heavy, glycemic heavy food, for example, sugar in the form of sweet fruits, jams, everything that is sugar. Also the many hidden sugars. These little habits that have become cherished. Maybe something sweet to go with your coffee in the afternoon. The Swiss say so nicely, gutsli at nine. All those things, bread, grain, pizza, cake. Rice, potatoes are carbohydrates, sweet drinks. The sweet glass of wine, it's all sugar. The body cannot live without sugar without question. But there always has to be a relief somehow. Or there has to be a compensation. I can also use more sugar for myself. When, of course, I am very active myself. So you really are 61 years young. So if you buy a nice bike now. And really cycle 15 to 20 kilometers every day. Then you will see what happens. So this metabolism boost... These muscles that cry out for sugar 
because you're going fast now, you're getting into endurance training too. This will help you treat insulin resistance in the future as well. And I'm not even 100% on the subject of insulin resistance because you don't even know if you have it. But if you have a pre-diabetic situation and you're already overweight and getting your act together is important. The other thing I would like to recommend to you right now is that you just take a diagnostic look at the COMT. This is an important enzyme that breaks down estrogen. If you don't break down enough estrogen due to lack of activity of this enzyme, if you lack this enzyme activity, then you will inevitably always have excess estrogen in your body which may only really come into play after menopause. And you should know that too. In my opinion, it's a bit more than just what I can take to thin the blood. I don't have to take aspirin because, of course, with the aspirin, I can force my acidity in my body a little. That's acetyl salicylic acid. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But I can manage my flow or I can bring my body into a better flow of life by maybe switching my life to a very low carbohydrate diet. Something really great is, for example, the intermediate fasting. Not eating for 16 hours. Just choose a meal for which you say... I could most likely do without it. And if that is dinner, it would be even better because then, of course, through the nightly period, you will also not have a lot of pressure to want to and be able to eat. So, see if you do this once a week, twice, maybe several times, but get yourself flowing here and just run away from a tendency in your body which calls for it a bit of relief and to get guidance. And the third is, of course, what I don't know. What's up with your thyroid? Is the thyroid too weak in your metabolism? It is therefore also reduced in its metabolic capacity. Is the thyroid gland just lacking selenium? Is it lacking iodine? Is it lacking cofactors? Maybe the thyroid values in the blood are still okay, but the TSH level, this thyroid stimulating hormone, is still in a threshold area, which I then see very critically in which direction is it tending. If it is over two, it tends towards hypothyroidism. And with the hypothyroidism, The metabolic rate is always reduced. That means my body becomes more inactive there too. I think I might have been able to help you a little with these things. Elke, and I sincerely wish you a lot of dedication for this journey. Enjoy the things which are really changing a lot. I think it's great for you to say, I don't just want to take a pill because that's always the worst solution because there's always a process that is developing due to malfunctioning mechanisms. First of all, the body has actually received information that it adjusts to. Then it adjusts to the information and then a so-called dysregulation occurs. This no longer corresponds to the normal situation. It left homeostasis, but it had to do it. For example, in menopause, there is a shift in hormone balance. And then, very quietly, a dysregulation develops. And the dysregulation leads to a malfunction. And it's nice that you say, I don't want this, to just throw a pill in and believe it's good. It's not good. And it feeds a way 
I don't really want to go, because being 61 is beautiful. Being 61 is really beautiful, and I think we are left with many happy years if we do not always see them from the perspective of what the next number is. It is so unimportant. Let's just live timelessly. And I've already said that on another episode. There's a nice book, Goddesses Don't Age. With this in mind, I sincerely wish you a wonderful Sunday evening and a lot of joy in being important to yourself, to get involved for yourself and deal with a lot of healthy stability, also with being happy about it. In this sense, have a wonderful Sunday evening and I'm really looking forward to the coming Sunday. Goodbye. <laughs>